Hello, my name's Al and today I'm going to show you how to upgrade your dropper remote. Replacing the remote on your cable operated dropper is dead easy and you don't need many tools. Tools that you do need are some cable cutters, some new cable. You might not need this if your cable happens to be the right length, but we'll show you how to replace it anyway. Some Torx keys, some Allen keys, something to mark your cable if it's too long and we need to shorten it slightly, and your new chosen dropper remote. So today we're going to be swapping our standard Thompson Covert remote for a wolf tooth remote. Now this mounts straight onto our SRAM brake lever that we have here. So what we need to do first of all is to determine the cable length that we're going to need when we swap the remotes over. One thing that differs also is that the standard remote has an inline adjuster whereas the wolf tooth remote has a, a barrel adjuster incorporated into the lever itself. So our first task is to remove the cable from the old remote and determine the length of cable we're going to need. The cable's clamped by a grub screw which requires a 2mm allen key to undo it. So just undo that. With that released we can pull the cable from the lever and we're going to use a 2.5mm allen key to undo the remote and remove it from the bar altogether. We're going to mount our new lever in its position so we can work out the correct cable length. We need to fit this threaded nut into the brake lever so we can screw our new dropper lever into place. So undo your brake lever and fit the threaded insert into the back of the lever clamp like so. Just going to nip that up for now. Make sure it's in roughly the right position. We can now mount our new lever. So we have a little bit of blue 242 Loctite on the threads and we're just screwing that into place. You're able to change the angle of this wolf tooth dropper lever and also its distance from the bar. That's adjusted using this small bolt here you need a 3mm allen key to undo and you're able to slide it backwards and forwards and have it nearer or further away from your grip. In this case we've got it as near as possible and we're going to mount it slung under the bar as far as we can. Nip that bolt up to hold it into place and now we can check our cable length. Now with the bars turned fully, we're going to mark the cable so we know how long our new cable outer needs to be. Being internally routed, we want to give ourselves the easiest time possible refitting the new cable. So it's really important not to pull all the cable out of the frame. Always leave either the inner or the outer cable in at any time and then you've always got something to thread through or over. We're going to remove the inner cable. It's all frayed at the end here. We're going to fit a new one. So I'm going to cut it. And we're also going to cut the zip ties that hold the cable into place. Got one there, one down here that we've just cut already. And we're going to pull the outer cable out of the bike like so. We've reattached our old end bit of cable and our barrel adjuster in order to get the, the proper length of outer cable and we're going to cut a new section. So make sure they're even at the end and you see our white line there and the tip X, we're just going to cut our outer cable there and we'll have the right length. Discard the old bit make sure that the new cable, so this is gear cable that we're using, tends to give a, a better lever feel, just making sure that the ends of the cable are open to accept our inner cable. 
To make it easier to feed the cable through, we're going to loosen this cable guide here. And if we remove that, then we've got a bit more room to get a new bit of cable out of through. We've got our bare cable out of here, so we're gonna fit ferrules to either end. Just make sure they're pushed all the way home. And then we can thread it into place using our old inner cable as a guide. So there we go, nice and easy, it's popped out of the bottom. Next, we're just feeding our outer cable up over the inner cable and into the seat tube so it meets the seat post. And once we've got it up as far as we can get it, then we're going to remove the seat post, fish the cable out and attach it. So we're going to undo our seat post clamp, formal Allen key on this bike, and then we can remove the seat post and hopefully feed the cable up. There we go out through the top of the seat tube. So here we've also got the old inner cable and we've also got the old ferrule which pulled off the, the old outer cable when we removed it from the frame. So we don't need that anymore. We're fully rooted all the way through so we're able to feed our new inner cable through without any issues. So you can remove that and discard it. So we're now ready to fit our new inner cable just guide that through the outer cable and it should appear out the other end, like so. You may need to go in from the other way depending on the kind of dropper post that you've got. With this Thompson Covert post, we need the cable nipple on the post end and the wolf tooth dropper remote clamps the bare cable on the other end, which makes it nice and easy. As you can see, this post is nice and clean and it has plenty of fibre grip already on it, which will mean that it won't cause any issue with the carbon in the frame and it will help prevent it from slipping or needing to be over tightened. We're going to slip that cable nipple into place into the red actuator and then we can insert the post into the frame whilst keeping the cable tight by pulling with the other hand. That's set at the right height, saddle's nice and straight, so we're tightening that up just enough to stop it from moving. Never over torque your seat clamp because you will damage something. Back at the lever end, we're ready to thread our cable through the remote. Now's a good time to remove the barrel adjuster, put a bit of grease on the threads and wind it all the way in and then back it out one turn. That would just give us a bit of adjustability. Thread your inner cable through the barrel adjuster. Pull the outer cable into place and then we're ready to clamp it. Undo the cable pinch bolt. This remote lever requires a two and a half mil allen key. We've already put a little bit of Loctite on that thread just to help prevent it from rattling loose and feed the cable through the cable clamp. Pull it tight. Make sure the lever is in position and clamp the cable. Just nip it up, you don't need to go crazy tight. And all being well, that should now be working and doing its job. We're just going to tidy things off at the lever end by trimming the cable and adding a crimp. With the cable fitted and crimped, we can now add any zip ties and cable guides that we removed. So with the cable secure, we've also checked that the brake lever is fully tightened, which it is, and everything's working as it should. So that's it, everything done, ready to go out and hit the trails. Thanks for watching, see you next time.